All right, let's give this a shot. I'll try to move that in the camera view. Okay, so I want to talk about this game. It's called Deck of Cards Hockey. And these are the instructions. They are only a page and a half. It's a simple game and uh, quite fast to learn and quite easy to learn. And to play the game, uh, as probably is you know, made obvious by the title, you just need a deck of cards. And the team sheets. These are team sheets. Yeah, these are team sheets right here. Uh, this is the 1966-67 season. As far as I know, there are only a few seasons available. I think there is another hockey gamer in the Delphi community. Um, probably Peter Miller and a few others who have tried uh, making other seasons for the game. But... Anyway, this is 66, 67, and uh, this is available. It's free to download. And yeah, you really just need a deck of cards, jokers included, leave the jokers in. So 54 cards total. And you get started by just shuffling them. And uh, I mean, once they're shuffled, you take out, uh, probably shuffled, but as good as they're ever gonna get. So just take out 22, count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 14, 15, watch me miscount a camera. I might have actually, I can't multitask well and I just interrupted my own counting. So, throw this, uh, well actually here what I wanna do is, uh, so again you have 32, this is, um, so how the game works, it's, um, and actually I'll pull it up here and read it verbatim. There are eight scoring sequences of four cards. Uh, in a period of play and so basically treat each sequence as two and a half minutes uh, eight of them in a 20 minute period and how it works I'm going to try to set up and play play and explain it as I go here so and again this will be the draw pile oh you can't really see that on camera can you tell I just got this earlier today so these cards are for the play sequences, and the draw cards are for um, if, uh, well, if a reading of team comes up, either for making a, a play, like possibly assisting on a goal, or for scoring a goal if it's scored. And basically the team, it's a combination of your lesser players, your, your players that don't get quite as much ice time, and or uh, some of the superstar players, they have a, a bit of an extra chance to get, you know, to accumulate more assist and points. Certainly if you're going to play out anything like a season campaign, a longer schedule. So anyway, how it works, um, I'll just get right into it. You flip a card. So this is a, this is a face card, which um, on, uh, if this were the second or fourth card in the sequence, uh, hopefully we'll get to that. Uh, this would be used a lot differently, but right now this is black. Black is visitor and red is home, which will be a little confusing, I think, for Detroit and Boston. Sorry about that, because of course Detroit, they have red jerseys, Boston has black, but I will play it according to the rules, just in case anybody wants to. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but like it does say right there that somewhere, if you can see that, that red is the home team and black is the visiting team, so... Just in keeping with the rules of the game. Uh, so King, as you see there, that's Bobby Orr. And he makes a play. Uh, an ace is an automatic play or an automatic possible assist. So is a 10. And then from there, they're rated. So you can see Bobby Orr, 6 to 10. And John Busick, 6 to 10. Murray Oliver as well. Eddie Westfall. Uh, they are a little bit more likely to be able to set up uh, another a teammate in scoring position. And... And, of course, uh, players are also rated according to their likelihood of scoring a goal once they have a scoring chance. So, anyway, again, uh, King Bob Yor has the puck. And a three, so he actually misplays it. And so what you do, this is two cards of the four-card sequence. So now I'm just going to flip two cards, disregard them. That two and a half minutes is gone. The next card. Oh, wait, this was a black king. What am I doing? Sorry. King Gordy Howe had the puck, and uh, <laughs> and three, so he he doesn't manage to make the pass or make the play, uh, and then so I flip the next two cards, and then six. So right now, because again, black, again, I see black as home, and I see Boston. I'm confusing myself here. Paul Henderson has it, 
and he can make he can have uh, he can set someone up for scoring chance on either an ace or an eight to ten. If you've played the game Shootout Hockey, I like this game because it's kind of like a shootout light. It's shootout without penalties. There aren't really penalties in it. There is a something you can do if you want to backfill power play and or shorthanded goals. I don't bother with it. But anyway, five. So Henderson, five. He does not make the play. He can only make a play on an ace or eight, nine, or ten. Uh, so again, I'm just going to flip two more cards. So we're five minutes into the period. No scoring yet. Four. So... I think it's Joe Watson, possibly Jim Watson, Jay Watson there in Boston has the puck. And eight. Oh, he just misses being able to make a play because he would make one on an ace, nine, or ten. And so, again, two cards are taken out of the deck. So we're seven and a half minutes into the period. Nine, so this time it's Ron Schock. He's a little more likely to make a play than was Joe Watson. And a seven, so he actually does. And the next, so, okay, so when a play is made, here, Ron Schock, seven. So he's going to set up somebody, and that's going to be determined by this card, the third of the fourth in the sequence. So it's a three. So he's fed uh, Gilles Marat, I think his name is. Sorry if I'm pronouncing his first name incorrectly. I think it's Marat. I might be pronouncing his family name incorrectly. But but uh, So he would score on an ace, nine, or ten. And again, aces always score, tens always score. You don't really have to think about it if you draw either of those two cards. And three, so obviously he probably doesn't even hit the net there. Uh, so I think we're 10 in. Joker. So Joker um, Joker is basically home ice advantage in this game. Uh, if you flip a Joker on the first card, it says, and this is explained in, even if you can't see it well, trust me, it's there. It's explained in the instructions. Uh, if a Joker is pulled on the first card, it's a home team's choice of playmaker. The second card, it's an automatic good uh, pass for a shot to score, what I'll sometimes refer to as a play. Uh, the second card, oh yeah, and visiting team, it works the opposite way. It's an automatic loss. Um, and uh, and the third card for the home team, it's the home team's choice of shooter. Fourth card for the home team, it's an automatic goal, whereas the fourth card for the visiting team, it's an automatic miss or loss of possession. So anyway, home has the choice. Why not go with John Busick? Busick with the ace, so he's going to feed. Um, well, let's see who he feeds, actually. Busick. So individual effort here from John Busick and a king. Now, this is a face card. I was hoping that we would get to this. So defense key for face cards. Uh, goalie Roger Crozier on Detroit is rated a D. So you look at D here and it says that they can score only on a king or a queen. Of course, this is the king of diamonds. So Busick has scored from Busick. Now, uh, if I want to flip to see if there's one assist on the goal, I'll only flip for the one. Uh, it's possible to have one assist and or unassisted goals in this. Uh, so I flip the ace. And so what I do, uh, well, actually, what anyone would do here, uh, it's a diamond. It's not the, hopefully I'll get to explain the team thing in another sequence. But ace of diamond. So Bobby Orr here, you see ace to five. So Orr would get the assist there. Busick from Orr sounds very plausible to me in 1967. Uh, you know, not that I was around then. I came a little later. Uh, so nine is, so again, it's one nothing Boston here. Nine, home team, Ron Shock with the puck again. And Shock with a jack, a red jack. So again, a face card. Finally, we got this in the sequence. The second card in the sequence being the face card. This time, rather than look at Crozier, I'm going to look at Detroit's team defense. I don't know if you can see that, but it does. Uh, it's a C. It it's, uh, says it's C there. So I look at C only on a king or red queen. So in other words, this won't work. Had this been, say, had their team defense been an E, like uh, Gardner, Detroit's backup goaltender, then only on a king, queen, or a red jack could a play be made. So as it turns out, that was shock. Shock has misplayed it. And again, I'm going to turn two more cards over. Uh, probably about five minutes to go now in the period. So six this time, Detroit with the puck again, Paul Henderson once again. And the Black Jack, that's a possible injury actually. Um, and again, this is explained. It's all here in the page and a half. So if the second card is a Black Jack, possible injury to the player identified in the first card. Flip the next card. If it's two to 10, that's the number of sequences missed uh, in this game. If the player's ID is pulled during that time, his team misses any opportunity to control or score. Uh, if it's a jack, the player misses the rest of the period. Queen, rest of the game. Okay, and then king, ace, and so on, he'd miss more. If it's a joker, he's fine, though. So let's see here. 
five, so we'll see he misses five scoring sequences. To be honest, I'm going to kind of ignore that for all intents and purposes here. So again, we get through that sequence. The injury hampered Henderson. He was banged up, had to go to the bench. Seven, so McGregor this time, Bruce McGregor with the puck for Detroit. And eight, so he's going to feed it through two. Let's see here, Queen, that is Gordy Howe. And Gordy Howe, does he score? This is the final card of the period. Does he tie the game? Indeed, he does. He would score on a four to ten here. So Howe ties it at one just at the end of the first period. Be right back. Okay, so it's going again, right? Yes, it is. So, um, once again, I have, uh, what's this called again? The draw file and the, the play sequence file. I guess they might have other, other names. doesn't really matter. Uh, but anyway, so the second period now. Um, by the way, I noticed it took 10 minutes to play the first period. It will not take you 10 minutes to play a period. Um, it will not even take you 10 minutes to play a game. It's just that I'm stopping and explaining everything. I, you can get through a game in well under 10 minutes if you're doing this on your own and not talking. But five, so Leo Boyvin has the puck for Detroit. I'll try to go a little faster this time. Two, meaning he misplays it. So two cards flipped in the sequence. Ace, so Norm Allman has the puck this time. Detroit's still in control with the King. Now again, the face card, Boston's team defense is C. C only on a King or Red Queen, King of Diamonds, so obviously Allman will play it. Two, Alex Delvecchio. And Delvecchio, can he take the lead? Well, Eddie Johnston is a D. They score only on a King or a Queen, no Red Jack. So Johnston does make the stop. And next sequence is five. Detroit with a lot of control here. So Leo Boyven. On a 10, he's able to make the play, as is any player. To uh, 6, and 6 is Andy Bathgate. Bathgate does not score. 7, he needed a 9, or of course an 8 or a 10. Or, I mean, ace or 10. Um, so, next sequence, King. So, Bobby Orr with the puck again. Orr uh, with a 5, so he actually can't play it because it's a 5. So, two more cards are flipped in the sequence. Red Jack. So Red Jack, of course, when it's the first card, you don't have to worry. The face cards have no bearing here. Just to identify the player, Ed Westfall. Westfall with a two, so it's misplayed. I think two is pretty much always going to be misplay. Uh, misplayed puck or turnover, whatever you want to call it. So Ace, of course, that's John Busick here. I mean, of course, I'm Boston. Uh, Queen, so Busick again. We look Boston, t or sorry, Detroit, team defense C. Again, the black and red is messing me up. Uh, team defense C, and only on a king or a red queen. So Detroit's actually able to wrest the puck away from Busick. Two more cards. Oh, look at that. Busick needed the red queen. Three queens in a row. Um, four. So it will be uh, Watson with the puck for the Bruins. And Watson with a nine. He does play it. Two, number seven. Uh, that's Ron Murphy. Murphy with a three. Can't put it in on Crozier. Three. So it's home again, Bob Dillabaugh. Hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Dillabaugh with an eight, barely misses making a play. And that is a scoreless second period. So I was playing a game earlier, and it was uh, the final score was 6-3. That's another thing that I like about this game. For a seemingly simple game, there's quite a lot of variance in scoring. You can play a lot of games. No two games are alike. And so I really like that. Within the simplicity, there's a, bit of, there's a deceiving complexity or depth and that you really can get a great variety of outcomes. Um, I'm just going to do a quick light live shuffle here. I mean, I didn't use the draw pile at all in that period. Maybe that will come up this time. The draw pile comes up really if you if you draw two and you need to know either the team player that's about to make the play or to award another assist on a goal. Come to think of it, when Detroit tied the game, I don't think I flipped for an assist. So sorry about that. All right, uh, so again, I'm going to quickly try to quickly here. So four, six, oh dear, it's not my strength. Oh, run away four, I'll throw that in the middle of the pack, middle of the deck. Uh, so what was that? Of course, I'm going to do that on the spot on camera. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18 20, 21, 22, zombie banana. All right, and... Here we go. Third period. Drop the puck. Once again, Detroit. They've had a lot of possession in this one. Boyven with a 10. He'll play it through. Detroit with a chance to take the lead. Six. Andy Bathgate with it. Seven. Once it, They're not well shuffled. I'm sorry about that. I remember Bathgate missing in a seven. I think I do at least. Four. Floyd Smith this time. The Queen. 
Boston team defense C, only in a king or a red queen. Floyd Smith plays it too. Uh, Gordy Howe, Gordy Howe, the goal scorer in this game for Detroit, and he puts another in the net. So it's 2-1 two, uh, two for the Red Wings. Uh, so Howe from Floyd Smith. This time I will flip for an assist. It's a diamond, and so I look at the D here. Uh, these horizontal lines here beneath the uh, the team. Um, and uh, J, so diamond, J, so... Was it Bent Marshall or Burt Marshall? B. Marshall with an assist on... Uh, Marshall and Floyd Smith assisted on Gordy Howe's goal. 2-1 Detroit here. We are, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we're about five minutes into the third period. Again, there's a wrinkle in here if you want to... Um, I guess if you want to just add a little more mm, realism to it, there's a way there's, you can roll 2d10 and determine, but I, I don't bother with that. So we'll say five minutes into the second. I keep simple games simple, um, for the most part. So eight, uh, Dean Prentice now with the puck and Prentice with the queen. And again, I have to keep checking the team defense only in a king or a red queen. Prentice is going to play it to number eight. That's Ted Hampson. Hampson gets a goal. Detroit's up 3-1. Here we go. We're getting some scoring. So Hampson from, who did I say had it the first time? Prentice, I think. And uh, yes, Prentice is the eight. That's another thing, too. You can go back and check. It's pretty easy. Even This is a, honestly, once you learn this game, it's hard to make a mistake playing this game. Uh, so we got a queen of spades now for the second assist. We look at spades. Ray Cullen would get the second assist. 3-1 Detroit. And eight, they get the puck again. Prentice once again here trying to follow up. But seven, he's unable to make a play. So we're going to discard the next two cards. And this time, John McKenzie, Boston trying to battle back. A king, team defense C. C, you can play it on a king. McKenzie, whoops, gets it to the jack, Ron Stewart. And Ron Stewart with a red jack. Crozier's a D. Only on a king or queen can he score. Crozier with, we'll say, a glove save. Okay, so two, this time we finally got this Boston team to... And they can make a play on an ace, eight, or a ten. So the team cards, these are going to be your lesser players, your guys who don't make plays as often. Ted Green, among the things he would have been known for in 1967 playmaking, probably wouldn't have been one of them, at least not quite as much. So I'm going to draw a card from here, and this is an ace. I do this a bit arbitrarily. So you've got four, and you've got 13 different cards from ace to king. So we'll go, let's say, four, three, three, three. I, I award any um, leftover number to... Well, it's always good because it's four or five. Anyway, so four for Dillabau. So I'm going to say that he has the puck. Is he able to play it? Nine. Yes, he is. That's within the team playmaking range. The seven. That's on to Ron Murphy. And Ron Murphy does not score. So it's still 3-1 Detroit. Joker, Boston's choice. We're going to say Bob Yor this time. Or with a black king. Again, Detroit's team defense C. So we look at C only on the king of red queen. Or gets the puck to the ace, Pitt Martin. And Pitt Martin with a nine is able to sink it. So... Uh, that is, well, it's a 3-2 game right now. It's 3-2, and let's see. We're down to the final two and a half minutes of the contest. So, let's see if Boston's able to uh, draw even here late. Three, so that, and sorry, by the way, if a black card has come up and if I've given the puck to Boston, it was unintentional. Um, anyway, three, so that's Detroit. So, they're guaranteed to win, and I don't know, at this point, you maybe you're discouraged from even flipping any further, but... It's such a quick game that even if you know one team's going to win and or lose, I mean, it only takes a few seconds, especially if I quit gabbing and just play the cards. So six, that's, um, well, sorry, three, so young, he misplays it. So, yeah, it's kind of a, I guess, you know, in a game like Hockey Blast, you call it a lull minute. There's a lull of a couple of minutes here. So, yeah, that's Deck of Cards Hockey. Uh Highly recommend it. I sometimes joke that it's a, it's a bedside game. I mean, it really has a relatively small footprint, especially once you learn you don't need the instructions. And really, these team team cards, I guess you could call them. I've not done it, but you could probably, I mean, print it on thicker paper, whether or not you'd even want to do that. You could, I mean, you could cut, you could color, you could dress that up a fair bit. The files are PDFs, so I don't think you're able to edit them, but... I mean, honestly, how long would it take to make a make a table like this in PowerPoint and or some kind of document? Fun, you could add team logo and everything like that, and dress it up as you wish. So that's deck of cards hockey. Bye for now.